Ready. Good well, good morning for you. Good afternoon for me. Um, this is a meeting of the LTAC committee on July 29th, uh, 2021, uh, to look at final allocations uh, for this year. And uh, I'm going to, my name is Jay Rose Pepe. I'm the city uh, council representative. And go ahead and please introduce yourself. Well, I'll start. I'm Corinne Haydock with the, the Portage of Bay Street Association. I'm Sharon King, chair of Fathoms of Fun Festival. I'm Marissa Seams. I'm with Red Lion and in Suites. I'm Brandy Reinierson, city clerk, city staff. Okay, so the reason we're here today is the council uh, rejected the uh, submission of the, the uh, after our last meeting of allocations, uh, basically uh, they were rejected uh, for two reasons. One, they wanted to give, uh, they wanted to give uh, all the organizations uh, an opportunity uh, to amend their applications if uh, so needed, because uh, we had some last minute uh, amendments uh, that were verbal. And they also wanted to make sure and emphasize that the math needed to be corrected on, uh, on the applications uh, uh, in order to be considered. So uh, with that being said, uh, Brandy, we could go back through how we did it last time, uh, what the applications were, what their requests were, and what's our budget. I mean, what's, yeah, what's, what is not allocated so far for this year? Yes. So um september ish last year the committee met um and the council has dedicated a hundred thousand dollars for 2021 expenditures for um operations of um events and festivals and marketing and then tourism marketing as a whole so in during that meeting last year the council uh, was still unsure of how um, COVID was still going to, and the governor's orders were going to play into festivals and events. And so they did not want to hold back the tourism marketing because if everything was good to go, they still wanted to have the opportunity for organizations to still market the city to get um, our heads in beds full. So they only allowed um, applications to be accepted for tourism marketing. So we did receive some applications for that and allocations. And let me just, so um, we received al um, applications from Fathoms of Fun and they were awarded 3,500. Port Orchard Bay Street Association for Tourism Marketing uh, received 8,000. Uh, Port Orchard Chamber of Commerce for the Explore Port Orchard piece received 6,000. Portraiture Chamber of Commerce for the Tourism Information Visitor Center received 10,000. Sydney Museum and Arts Association for Tourism Marketing received 5,000. Visit Kitsap for Tourism Marketing received 20,000. So of the $100,000 for 2021, 52,500 has already been allocated. The remainder would be $47,500 for this committee to consider um, and provide a recommendation to the council. Um, let's see. Then after the first of the year, um, let me see, we were going to relook at the funds to see what the fund balance is. And Jay, I don't recall. If I recall, I believe that the fund balance for the start of this year was around 200,000. Um, and when we met with the council to see if their, what their position was of using any of that reserve or uh, carryover, leftover, however you wanna word it, um, the, the council remained um, consistent in that uh, we're gonna follow the budget and for 2021 and 2022, 100,000 each year will be allocated. Um, some of the consensus was that the, they don't want to spend that down because they wanna have a full year's worth of funds in the account should we, Hit another pandemic and uh, things or revenue don't come in revenue doesn't come in as projected um so with that the committee met or the council allowed um staff to advertise for the special event in marketing what is it marketing of special events and operations designed to attract tourists 
Um, so we opened that up, received applications, committee met, and the committee's recommendation that was brought before the council just uh, probably about maybe a month ago. I had it. Was um, the applications that we received was fathoms of fun. They requested twenty. They requested sixteen thousand five hundred. Portraiture Bay Street Association requested nine thousand. Saints Car Club requested twenty five hundred. Visit uh, Kids App regarding a passport to Port Orchard requested ninety five hundred. Visit Kids App Ride the Tide um, Rendezvous re requested twenty five hundred. During the, the um, committee deliberation, there was some concerns um, with two event organizers on the city's new requirement to have certified flaggers or some sort of traffic control plan based on the police department's workload. Um, they, they just can't accept that, um, that task at this time. And so they pushed it back onto the event organizers to find a way to um, um, traffic control, basically. Um, because of that, uh, Saints Car Club did submit an uh, amended application asking for an additional $1,000 for that, which would bring their total ask to $3,500. That application was submitted bef uh, after the deadline, but before the committee met, it was passed on to the committee. During the committee meeting, um, uh, another event organizer, Fathoms of Fun, also recognized that there was going to be some expenses uh, related to that as well, and asked that uh, the committee consider adding additional 6000 to their application for flaggers uh, traffic control plan for their various events, bringing their total ask to $20,500. Um, during that conversation, during the review of the applications, we did notice that um, one of the application, one of the applicants um, wasn't sure if the committee would consider seeking reimbursement for an event that had already happened um, after they, um, the event already happened, and then we accepted lodging tax applications. So would the city be interested in um, accepting reimbursement for an event that has already happened versus all the other event organizers submitted for future events. Um, with all that said, the committee uh, considered and deliberated and made motions and they had uh, made the decision to accept uh, the lodging tax addition for flaggers for Fathoms of Fun of additional 6,000. They also was willing to accept a late application from the crews um, for an additional thousand dollars again for the flagging bringing their total ask to 3500 um, they also accepted the full amount for bay street association of nine thousand again that was the request and that was the recommendation as far as visit kits app uh, the application that was um, for an event that had passed, they declined to accept that application, stating that um, they didn't want to open up the doors to have, although this is a, an odd year and, and we're having different um, experiences, they felt that it just um, wasn't the right time to ask for reimbursement for an event that had already happened. Um, however, they did make a comment that they were looking forward to possibly when we open up the 2022 funds, um, looking forward for that application. The other application that Visit Kids App presented was Ride the Tide. That event had not happened yet. However, um, they were asking the city to um, go in and support a software program that would help, um, which would be a big operating, would be a portion of the operating expense to um, make that event more successful. Um, they declined to allocate funds for that. Um, and, and the reasoning was because um, they felt with the, the main summer season, because that's when they were gonna target, was more than halfway done. And they felt that to have a software program and have it to its full potential didn't make sense to invest it in this year when the season was at least for the Port Orchard's perspective of events was pretty much over. Um, but again, they did uh, state that they felt that the event was uh, worthy of an application. The timing wasn't right. And they look forward to the application being presented next year for the 2022 um, allocation process. So with all that being said, the committee did recommend 
um, the full ask, including the amendment for fathoms for 20,500, the full ask for Port Orchard Bay Street Association for 9,000, uh, the full amended ask for the cruise of 3,500, and decline to award any funds for Visit Kitsap for the passport to Port Orchard, um, and also declined uh, to award any funds to Visit Kitsap for the Ride the Tide event. Um, as a reminder, the balance was 47,500. The committee recommend, recommended to the council to award 33,000. Uh, when it went to council, as Jay um, alluded to earlier, um, they had some concerns with some numbers of uh, certain organizations application, wanted them the opportunity to go back and revisit that. Um, in addition, they wanted to make sure that um, all um, or uh, event organizers have the opportunity to review their application and events to make sure that um, they were also awarded the opportunity to amend their application or submit an application for flagging. And I think that was the other component. There might be one more. You can correct me if I'm wrong, Jay, but I think those were the main components. And so they remanded. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware of the process, but committee makes a recommendation, goes to council. Council can accept or deny. Um, they can't nitpick, they can't go through and, and redo the whole process of the lodging tax committee, at least at this first bluff. Um, so they rejected it, brought it back to the committee. It's for you guys now to reconsider. Um, and um, I should point out too that they did um, direct staff to reopen the application process to allow other applicants to apply. Uh, we received no new applications. We received a um, updated revised application from Fathoms of Fund that uh, basically provided the um, this uh, paperwork to support their flag or flagging information. There may be some other minor changes in that application as well, but I presented it to you, the committee as a whole, um, for the whole application. So. Um, I think that's what I have. So again, you guys can, you have $47,500 to go through and um, reassess the, all the applications or um, I'm not sure, Jay, how you wanna proceed with the uh, deliberations. Well, a couple of things. Uh, one is um, just a reminder that if we're discussing uh, or, or going to revote on this uh, individually, uh, that if you're a member of that group that you cannot vote on that. So it would have to, and also that I'm a facilitator uh, and not a voting member. Um, we can either take this as a whole and say, hey, we have, uh, uh, I believe it was $33,000 that we had allocated. Uh, we have updated uh, information justifying this, that we're, we're satisfied with our allocations and move it forward again. Uh, we have some additional funds, as I mentioned before, nobody's really excited about spending that. I want to look more at 2022. Uh, we're seeing uh, changes in guidance right now, but it looks like we'll be okay for the rest of the year, I would say, without side events. So anybody would like to speak first, uh, feel free. Uh, everybody's got open mics, so just be respectful of other folks. Uh, we can either take it, you guys can either vote on it, on what's been allocated, or you can take them one by one. I'll leave that to you all. A question, Jay? Go for it. So I want to be sure I understand this. Did the council have issues with any of the dollar amounts voted on by the committee? I, and again, I, of course, wasn't part of that last meeting because um, I was in France. Um, did they have any difficulties with the, the amounts or was it just uh, statistical information in the application? I believe, I believe it was twofold. One, it was the uh, people coming in after the fact and asking for additional amended funds when that wasn't public for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, that's obviously remedied by Brandy. Uh, and also that the uh, information, the numbers didn't add up uh, on one application and they felt that that was, uh, uh, well, that they understand it. It's not uh, the, the way, you know, it should be correct and it's presented uh, both to uh, the committee and to the council. Okay, right. and, and, and am I to understand that's the Fathoms application or is that another application? I mean- No, that was Fathoms okay. application. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't called out specifically, but the numbers that that was mentioned um, pointed to fathoms. 
Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, but I mean, that's the elephant in the room. So it should, you know. Um, and it was all, it was also the justification, you know, for, you know, how did you justify the 6,000? And, and, and for flagging. For flagging. And okay. so, um, you know, it, it was last minute trying to get things together. You know, things are a little bit smoother right now. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's the amount because it's under and still allowing, you know, funds. There's activities planned. Uh, so I, I think, in my personal opinion, and Brandy, I'll look at you. Uh, uh, I think they would be fine with the amounts if the committee came back and said, hey, we've updated the application, we've allowed the process to move forward, uh, and we can support this. Okay. And yeah. So they, did, they did not address the amount specifically, Okay. Um, other than that they would move, that a particular council member would um, only approve moving forward with the application amount submitted, um, not the amendment, um, but as far as all the other allocation amounts, um, they didn't speak to it or against it. Okay, it I was mean, a, not the verbal, yeah, not the and as amendments. we all know, it was an unusual year, and um, you know, just to for um, you know, to put it in perspective, City of Bremerton just finally did their 2021, mm -hmm. and they gave those applicants like two weeks <laughs> to submit and then three weeks later submit for the 2022 which I was busy working on at 7 30 this morning for the Roxy and sent that in so it's it's an issue you know everywhere because of COVID so um and then on top of that the flagging was kind of a last minute thing although we've known for a while that might be coming down the pike but it was also a last minute thing so um, can, can we can't vote on our individual applications that we represent, but can Sharon speak to any questions we have? Sure. I, what, what, one of my recommendation was, and, and Brandy, please correct me if I'm wrong. I was kind of leaving, leaving you guys the option of saying, Hey, we've looked at the numbers. We're satisfied with it. We want to move the package forward without doing every application individually. In other words, just uh, taking it as a whole whole yep. packet. And I'm fine with that, especially because we don't have a full representation from our um, committee members. And so then that becomes more difficult to recuse yourself. Um, done it with two before when we've been I know desperate. I know I know yeah I mean the committee can discuss you know the merits of the application but um just just to clarify that if you had specific questions of the application for Sharon or if Sharon had specific questions regarding POBSA's applications um I would um advise against that just because you're not giving the other applicants the opportunity to clarify any questions you may have Okay, yeah, I, I can live with that. I think that's fine. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot the gal's name from Red Lion. What was your first name? Uh, Marissa. Marissa. Do you, I mean, I'm just looking for, you know, responses from Marissa. And, and um, I, think, yeah. I think that we should just go with what we went with last time. They showed like the amount we need for flaggers. So I think we should just move forward. Okay. May I make a comment? Go for it. With an as long as it's not related to your application, Sharon. Okay, I'll withdraw my intent to make a comment then. I'm just trying to be fair to all the other yeah. applicants. Yeah. I know it's, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> so, so well then, I mean, Sharon, I mean, I'm, I would like to just suggest that we, we send um, our committee recommendations back to the council as is at $33,000. Um, with the amended applications. Yes, with the amended applications. Updated. Let's say, updated. yeah, updated. So, updated to, so there would, yeah, so there would be a new amount. So it would actually be $35,060. Okay, right. $35,000 still leaving um, a little bit left to put towards 2022. Um, you know, yeah, and Visit Kitsap did get money in the marketing part, right? Correct, they got, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so. Um, yeah, they got 20,000, yep. Okay, that's what I thought. So um, 
you know, I don't, I won't, I don't want our new visit kits that person to be discouraged because I think she's going to be fabulous, Beth ja Javins or Javins or whatever her name is. But, um, but yeah, that that makes sense to me. I vote for going back to city council with the updated slash amended committee recommendations for thirty five thousand dollars, giving Fathoms additional at what twenty five? Yeah, twenty five hundred. Pubs and nine thousand. Saints thirty five hundred for a total of thirty. Five, thirty-five, right? Thirty-five thousand and sixty dollars is what I come up with. Okay. So I'm I'm good with that. I second that. Sharon, I'm gonna make it unanimous. Go oh, with that. Okay. <laughs> and Brandy, you don't have a vote, but uh, neither do I. But uh, I got it written down. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, the only other business we have is hey. We want to vote. Do we want to vote on that motion first? Oh, I, I'm sorry. I thought we did. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Sharon, you want to say aye? Uh, okay. She was muted, but she raised her hand. Uh, the only other business we have is we ha do have 2022 coming up. Uh, so we'll schedule a meeting in October. Uh, and get uh, asked for applications. Uh, it should be a brave new world and uh, go from there. So, so anything just, else for the good of the order? Yeah, yes, just a reminder Randy. that the, the committee structure may change. So uh, the state law requires that the council review the committee structure. Um, and historically the city um, reviews it and appoints um, some uh, returning and some new members. Um, and again, it is all based on how many hoteliers that we can get. And um, hopefully we'll still have the two remaining hoteliers um, want to participate for 2022 funding. Um, and if that's the case, then we'll um, uh, uh, point to other um, organiz not, uh, organizations that can benefit from the, the funds. And that as that is appointed by the mayor and confirmed by the council. So my goal is um, in September to bring the mayor's recommendation <clears throat> if I can get it from him sooner, then I'll, I'll bring it forward in August. Um, I want to get this approved by the council first, and then the next meeting, um, hopefully um, get him to um, appoint and provide a recommendation to the council. So, um, and at that point, once I get the new committee structure, then I'll go ahead and start advertising. I don't know at that time, Jay, if you want to relook at these, these applications, if you want to just keep it consistent and move forward with the new committee. Um, so we'll that's... Probably. We'll probably start with the new committee because it will okay. be for 2022. So just a reminder that you know some of you will may remain and some may not. Randy, I think I've asked this before. Maybe Jay knows, <clears throat> but if I have, I'm sorry. But wasn't there some movement or talk in not so much in Port Orchard, but um, of the ability to include Airbnb? Bees as hoteliers, where, where is that at? Is that anywhere? I don't, I, I know that there's been a lot of talk um, either through the state legislators or just intern, um, not internally, but around Port Orchard. Um, I've had, yeah, I've heard nothing official on that. Yeah. And uh, okay. I don't remember even seeing it on the radar screen. <laughs> Excuse me, there was some, there was some conversation and I can't remember if it was through economic development committee or somewhere, but they had talked about that, um, that some of the Airbnbs may have some confidential confidentiality rights that aren't the same as a business, even though they're a business. So I don't know. And I don't know if that's being held up for those state legislators, but I, I think, I think Bremerton maybe where I heard more of that conversation that, oh, okay. But um, I mean, it's Red Lion and, and our Comfort Inn or West Western, whatever it is, that's, they're great. I, I appreciate you guys, but we also have more Airbnbs popping up all the time. So um, anyways, I just wasn't sure if you'd heard any more about that. I haven't. Okay. Um, if there is anybody that's interested that wants to be a part of the committee that is an Airbnb, um, I would encourage you to encourage them to reach out to the city and we can um, 
start um, digging into whether this is the direction that the city wants to go or not. I think there just hasn't been somebody approaching the city and having interest for us to even move it up on the task list to look at. Okay. All right. Okay. That would be my recommendation. I'm not sure if, if uh, Jay is a member of the council would, you know, approve I, it. I, you know, I, I hate to even uh, approach right now our, our uh, staff attorney. Uh, sure. Seeing what the costs are. <laughs> Ask yeah. that some. I think the Airbnb could ask the legislature uh, if they if they can. But right now, that's not on the on the radar screen. Okay. Um, it's one o'clock on the East Coast. Anybody have anything else for the good of the order? I wish it was one o'clock here on the West Coast. <laughs> no, Marissa, no. thank you. Karen, thank you. Karen, okay. thank you. All right. And and I'll be working on the minutes here, hopefully in the next week or two, and, and get those out to you guys. Um, just for the record. Um, and then I do plan on bringing this uh, committee's recommendation to the council at the August 10th meeting. So okay. we'll let you know. Okay. Thank you. Life is good. Right. Thank, All right. you. Thank you Bye -bye. everybody for attending for last minute. Thank you so much. Bye, you guys have a good day. Fly safely. Always. Bye. Have Bye -bye. a good day. Bye. Thank you.